Hey, what's happening gamers? It's K-Wing here and time for another 3DS video review. November hasn't just been a massive month for console gaming. The 3DS has some really great titles and it's about time. One such title is the rebirth of a classic franchise by Sega, Shinobi, which got its start in 1987 in the arcades, followed by several games for the Genesis and of course the Game Gear. Shinobi for the 3DS is a return to the series 2D roots and like its predecessor is a side-scrolling action game. Developer Gryptonite Games is no stranger to 3DS games, having done Green Lantern and Marvel Super Hero Squad for the system already. But can they rekindle the ninja's flame for a new generation of gamers? Actually, I think they can. As the game boots up, Shinobi features four difficulties to select. The game also has automated checkpoints, plus unlimited continues too for the easy and normal difficulty. If you're playing the game on hard or extreme, then you have limited lives and it's intense. Now the game's story begins is in feudal Japan, where the main protagonist, Jiro, whom you may know as Joe's father, leaps into action to save his ninja village, which is under siege by enemy ninjas, of course. This stage acts as a tutorial for the game, showing you how to parry attacks, hang from stuff, wall jump, and of course the combat, which by the way is very fluid and definitely makes one feel like a ninja master. Brand spanking new to Shinobi's 2D offerings are the grappling hook to hang on to ceilings, sliding under foes, and of course the stealth kills, which are pretty awesome. A score system is also in place and gives this game a very unique feel to it. Defeating numerous foes rises your score gauge, which can be viewed on the top right of the screen. Like Joe, Jiro can use magic arts too. These four powers are selected using the touch screen and work for a limited amount of time like in the originals. As far as the game goes itself, it takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes to beat each level. The game also has some 3D on rail stages and of course your typical boss battles at the end. Aside from the main story campaign, Shinobi also has challenge maps that are unlocked through coins collected using the street pass. These missions are one hit deaths though, so it takes a skilled ninja to complete them. So, what do I have wrong with this game? A few things come to mind, actually. Since I don't play with the 3D on due to eye restrictions, this is one game where you really should, especially for the 3D stages. Because without it, this game makes it difficult to judge distance in the levels, and because of this, Jiro will smash into trees while riding on horseback, or smash into rocks while surfing. Such a pain. Remember how epic Shinobi 3 was for its blocking system? Well, this game is not very good. The blocking is actually replaced with the parry system, which I really don't like to be honest, because you need to time your parries perfectly before you're attacked. Later in the game, this becomes a big problem as foes are more powerful and skilled. Frankly, I was really disappointed that the blocking is nothing like the last game. If they just would have let Jiro hold in his block like Joe by holding in the button, then the controls would have felt a lot better. Next up, the platforming parts of the game are very annoying and downright repetitive. After being introduced in the village, every level seems to have one. I mean, what's up with this? Now, I wouldn't mind this if it wasn't horribly too sensitive to control, but it is. This proves to be true when trying to wall jump and avoid the spike traps. Near the end of the game, enemies make it very hard for players to jump on a platform too, and this results in a lot of pitfall deaths. Which actually, it doesn't feel reminiscent to Shinobi 3. All these uh, bad platforming mechanics remind me of the faults I had with Revenge of Shinobi. Oh well, at least the double jumping works correctly. A small victory over the past games, but a victory nonetheless. Speaking of revenge, I hated the maze level with the passion of a thousand burning suns. Well, guess what's back? Yep, the maze. Which has been upgraded and is more complex and annoying than ever before. Now Jiro needs to navigate the different portals to find his way out. And the way the stage is laid out, you could be playing for hours and still be lost. Relax folks, this game does have some good redeeming qualities, and I don't hate it at all. Graphically, many critics haven't really been impressed with this game, but I was. I really love how the levels look with the cell shaded graphics, and from the first level, I was hooked. This is definitely a very great looking 2.5D game. I enjoyed how the game starts in old Japan and moves into the future. It gave this game a very Samurai Jack steampunk vibe, and I like that. On top of the really detailed looking characters and level designs, as a bonus the game is told using anime style cinematic. These cutscenes really captivate the player and do a great job of storytelling to boot. As mentioned before, 3D is actually a great addition to this game for people that aren't bothered by it. Sound effects are excellent and the music really complements this game very nicely. As far as ninja games go, this score is amazing. 
I find myself listening to the epic tunage in the extra menu from time to time because they all sound so cool and unique because of the variations in musical styles. Gameplay for this game besides what I already mentioned was awesome. Chicken and crates to ease your pain, secrets in each level, and the combat is as smooth as glass. Much like Shinobi 3, this game allows players a variety of actions to defeat your foes. I love that. From tossing kunais at a safe distance, using magic to destroy them, sneaking up behind them, and even kicking them in the face, it's all good. While magic has a lesser role than before, I still do like using fire, lightning, and especially water magic because it makes you faster and jump higher. And trust me, that's awesome. Earth magic is still lame and deplenishes your health and kills you, but actually it is very vital for mastering the game and earning an S rank. Unlike many games today, Shinobi uses a score system and keeps track of how many combos you get, times you get hit, die, etc, etc. Shinobi's score will also penalize the player for taking too long and using magic. I actually like this because it helps you increase your score using multipliers and getting a better grade. You know you're doing very well when Jiro's sword is glowing. If it isn't, well then you need to try harder, ninja. Replay value for this game is very high for a variety of reasons. Levels can be replayed in free play after they are completed in story mode, tons of challenge maps are added thanks to the street pass, and Shinobi features unlockable costumes and even Joe makes a triumphant return to the series. Achievement nuts will have their hands full with this game too. Cheats can be applied in this game, as well as different weapons like golden axes, well, golden axe, and other goodies are in this game like pictures and other stuff. The developer really packed this game chock full of additional content, and that's a very good thing. All in all, Shinobi set out what it was supposed to do, and Sega released a very good game. Though I'm very bothered by the numerous game delays and the fact that they really didn't change anything for its November release. We're playing the same game that could have been available during the long game drought for the 3DS this summer. But I digress, you gamers looking to relive the glory days of the 90s, then buy this game right now. It's a very well made game and has a lot to offer in the long term, and that's very important for portable games. Just remember to keep a cool head when playing this game, because as the game states, a ninja that charges in rushes to his own death. Well, thus wraps up another review. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. If you want to know what I'm up to, I have a Facebook and Twitter if you want to check those out, plus a game album on iTunes as well. Also, subscribe if you like my stuff. Well, until we meet again, gamers, God bless and happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great rest of the day.